Hi, it's Denise from Realize Your Art Garden Studio, and today I'm going to do the end of May garden tour. We're just coming off of two very cold days, cold rainy days, and I was taking a walk in the yard just to see how things had fared on a low, low 40 evening, and everything seemed to do good, so I thought, eh, I'll just do a quick walk around for everybody to see where the update is for this year. So let's first start in the kitchen garden, which is the garden that is right outside of my kitchen windows, and for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I redid this whole section last year, and it used to just be hostas, green hosta, variegated hosta. I dug everything out and added a bunch of new plants, mostly perennials. I have limelights, hydrangeas, I put in peonies this year, I've left some of the dark hostas as well as some of the variegated hostas just to kind of get some bulk in there for now. It's lined with pachysandra that are doing quite well. Pink perfusions are in there, I have some syrix grass, this uh, bright yellow grass that's done well. I have a host of different hookera. For cor you know, everybody calls those corabels too, but I call them hookera. And there's the various species of them. They go from the dark wild berry to, I think it's like a peach cobbler, etc. I will put the names on the screen of all of those. But I think it gives it a nice variety of color in there. Also in there, uh, butterfly bushes. I put in a Japanese maple that I had in a pot for many years. I also have... Down here, I did some super tuna vistas, more pink perfusion, some cat's pajamas. Some of those need to be sheared off so that they come back. And then just kind of going back here with more of the old butterfly bush and another lime like. So that's kind of the, the gist of the kitchen garden. Let's walk on, and, on the deck and we'll do a quick review of the container cut flower gardens that I put in and then some of my containers. Most of these containers were put together what, of things that I've already started in seed um, in the greenhouse over the winter. So first off is my herb garden. That's a standing garden. Um, my husband actually built this many years ago. It's wonderful because it's a really nice height for herbs. Lots of basil. I have mint, dill, chives. And then for now I was <laughs> trying to get my dahlias to really take bloom and I'll probably transplant them in the landscape in a little while and eventually put in some more dill back in the back half of that section. The next container area is one that I was planting with just extras that I've had around, getting rid of stuff that was in my greenhouse. I actually love this container. This was the ornamental kale that I think a lot of you saw. It was growing out of its pot. Um, I repotted the pansies in there, put in a geranium some vines, which I think looks pretty nice. We'll see how it does. In this particular container, these are my artichokes that I started down in the hoop house. And then for now, I just put in some super tunias, some coleus that I had hanging around, and then these really cool little cups, which are supposed to get really huge. So I'm looking forward to see what they look like. Eventually, this container is going to float to the front of the deck because it is on wheels, also something that my husband built me many years ago and it has lived through both veg vegetable gardening as well as other things. This next container, some of you probably saw on one of my previous videos, it was just kind of getting rid of, rid of and planting all the rest of the flowers and seedlings that I had started. Some of these seedlings were so tiny when I put them in there and they're just loving it. I added a raised bed mix to this. I have some dahlias in there, lemon cypress, coleus, marigolds, uh, celosia, dephansis, a lot of the geraniums that I've propagated over the whole winter that's done well. All the ficus trees underplanted with under that ficus tree is Calibricoa, uh, the super bells by proven winners. Another one of my containers, spike plants. I did just, I don't do anything that's necessary set other than having kind of a thriller. And then my fillers are either, usually geraniums, um, dusty millers, and every other kind of uh, piece. My spillers usually are a super tunia or some kind of variegated vine. Another underplanted ficus tree, and again, extras coleus, 
and celosia that I had started. Ooh, this is a little sunny out here. Other container, a lot of supertunias, dahlias, spike plant. This particular one has more marigolds, dahlia, spike plant. Um, I think this is the Over Easy from uh, Proven Winners. Some more underplanting of another ficus tree that lives on the deck. And then finally, the last one, um, the Dusty Miller. Plus, this is the Honey, honey, honey Bell Supertunia. And I can't remember the name of this one. I'll put it on the on the notes. But I just love this with the uh, super tunia honey. And again, another spike plant. So let's kind of walk through and see what else we have going on in the yard. So outside of the greenhouse, did a little bit different. I used to have bushes planted over here. Um, this year what I've done is I've gone totally containers. And I'm just going to back up and let you see where it is. But it is a variety of containers that sit on a raised bed. The reason I do that is in the wintertime, because it's a slanted roof, and in the springtime, I just get tons and tons of water and ice that just shifts down. And anything I put under it there just gets killed. But in terms of my raised bed containers, and these all, just why I do it this way, is these all move back into my greenhouse for the winter time. So a lot of purple fountain grass, a lot of super tunias in the beds themselves, um, more bubblegum super tunias, lots of geranium spike plants. I'm not going to go through each one because a lot of you know these. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you on answers. And then the last of the containers. So that's kind of the the front of the greenhouse. The next area that I'll quickly show you is the one that I'm currently working on that I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Hopefully I'm not going to get buzzed by a lot of sun right now. This all was a junky part of my yard. <laughs> it used to have three or two dead pine trees and a very dead box elder. I had those pulled out, dug everything up, amended it, the dirt, and then rehomed I'm still working on that. Sorry for the mess back there. I rehomed a red bud and then did a lot of planting. And I do have a separate video on all the various plants in there. But just as a quickie, there are the banana cream, Shasta daisies, the heaven scent, Jacob's ladder, bees balm. Uh, what's back there? I can't remember. Um, uh, sage, Russian sage. Lots and lots of the variegated and the green hostas in front. I have Gold, Host hosta, Gold Coast hostas and then a couple of varieties that I rehomed from another area. And then just yesterday I planted in the rain the Serendipity Allium, which will be really pretty because it's raining both of that. My plans are in the back, if you can see back there, because there's the ramp where I keep a lot of my pots. I'm going to be doing an elderberry, probably a dark purple elderberry, and then a couple of the bright lime elderberries back there. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and do um, maybe some other type of flowering bush to, again, bring some color in there. Because I think that will be a really nice addition. So maybe a limelight or never, maybe a firelight hydrangea is what I'm thinking right now. All right. Getting through it, right? Now I'm going to do the walk down the sidewalk gardens. And again, last year, if you guys have been following me for a while... This is the right side, left side <laughs> sidewalk garden. I don't have a better name for it, so if anybody has a good name for it, have at it. But what I've done here is I dug out, used to have a bunch of hostas, and I planted in a ton of perennials. And you'll see as we go down, I'm going to do the left side first. Um, I did the stone hedge sedum along the whole walk down. On the inside, I have the uh, Firelight Hydrangeas, which are already starting to bud. I'm so excited already. Look at that. Can't believe it. It's end of May and it's already happening. Russian Sage. I did put in some Super Vista Tunias. Um, Dithansis, which I think a lot of you saw this before, but they are just doing fabulous. I rehomed some Peonies which look great. 
I did some the Pugster butterfly bushes. Those are actually the purples. And then I have Coriapsis. And everything kind of repeats along the way. I have some Echinacea. More Russian Sage. Some Pink Profusion that I've put in. Added in um, the sister of the Japanese maple that we had on the upside under the the other garden. Added that in here. And again, repeats all the way down. So nothing new. This is another one of the butterfly pugsters. This, I believe, is a purple. And then I have two pinks over there. Added some additional sedum that I rehomed. A lot of cat's pajamas. I have a fountain grass in terms of and then I have some um, daisies, and these are the Shasta daisies that just bloom all summer long. They're getting ready, and really they doubled in size since I just put them in there last year. So I think that came out pretty well. I'm going to take a walk, a very quick walk over to the vegetable garden. I think most of you have seen it, but we might as well do a full garden tour while we're doing this today. And let's see. I love it when it, uh, don't look at my grass because it needs to be cut right now, just because it was two days of nine cutting. But let's see where we are. It's a, getting a little sunny this way, so I'll try to get this in pretty quick. Yeah, kind of hard to see. Let's see. Again, gold, uh, Yukon gold potatoes, uh, some Brussels sprouts, pepper plants, eggplant, more peppers garlic might be easier to do it garlic which these are the ones that were out all winter some onion plants down here I have one of my artichoke plants all of you have seen my many days of lettuce my tomato plants some cherry some early girls my spinach is doing really, really well. Planted some corn, radish, turnips. I have some more greens that are growing back there. And then inside the hoop house, see how it fared. I actually have not been down here yet this morning, so hopefully nothing really froze over. Uh, my garlic is doing very well getting ready to pick my one onion that wintered over in here. But I have dill. I just started stringing up my cucumbers. If you can see down here, this is my little excited thing. Those are the Tanja Peel from Proven Winners. Those are the grower vines. Those I'm going to train to go up and over. And then I also have some sweet peas that are going to grow up and over my vegetation tunnel. Pretty excited. Lots of basil, parsley, thyme, cucumbers, watermelon, you name it, is in this area. These are all going to get trained to go up and over the vegetation tunnel. Green beans. I have a lot of peas that I just started that are coming up, which look good. My dill's a little sad from the rain. Again, some sunflowers, everything that's going to be trained up the tunnel. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then here you can see my tomatoes are already string getting string trained. And then my sugar snap peas are going crazy. Been pulling off sugar snap peas already. More cucumbers and then my zucchini vines and carrots that are getting trained. Also have some pole beans that are just I put in like a couple days ago. And they're doing really well. So that's kind of it of the hoop house. Let's walk over here to the secret garden. This is one of those patches of garden that I have just left. And what I did, normally there's like either the kids toys in here or something. I amended all this dirt, put a couple sunflowers, both mammoth and the Italian white sunflowers in the back, put in the zinnias that I had started, cosmos, and again, as you can tell, I had a run on Dithanthus. 
I think I got mad at him because I couldn't get him started in the greenhouse. And so I just ended up throwing him out in the hoop house, oh, about a month ago. And then all of a sudden I had thousands of devances. <laughs> it was kind of funny. So now I'm just growing them. Not quite sure where I'm going to use them, but uh, it is what it is. And let's see, let's take a walk up to the water garden. And just something really quick, just some hostas. And then I had started quite a few dahlias. We're going to see how those do. This is typically a very sunny spot. Uh, I, for some reason, it cracks me up, but those hostas do great, I think, because they get so much water from the water. And they never burn out. We'll see what they do this year. So I thought I'd try those with the dahlias and see how those do. Under here is the back house boathouse garden that I just redid, and you're going to get shadows from me, so let me see if I can take it on the side a little bit. And this is kind of my sad try at trying uh, <laughs> some flowers that I think are going to work. More Pachysandra, uh, rehomed quite a few hostas. Let's see what else do we have under here. I'll put them on the, the screen, but just started this. So some of it looks pretty good. Some of it, I think we might have to move it away, but it is what it is. Walking to the side of the boathouse. These are things that I still have to do. I do have two rows of Sharon that are just beautiful. And then I think I'm going to rehome three of the boxwoods that I have sitting in the side garden and put them there. I started some of the lemon elderberry. And then here I started some of the lemon elderberry. But this whole area I still need to work on. It's getting there. It's just, you know what, you got to start. It's like eating an elephant. You, take, uh, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So this is where I'm at right now and trying it. All right, nothing exciting here. This is another starting area under the big pine. Very sunny. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but <clears throat> we home some hostas. This is, you're getting the morning sun that we have right now. I have some wee hostas in there, some variegated, some of the dark green hostas, and then two more lemon elderberry. So walking up with the sun bright in my eyes, I will give you the last part of the tour. Hopefully I can get out of the sun quickly. <clears throat> and this is the side garden tour. Woo! All the way up the length of the house. And this gets bright, bright sun in the morning and all evening long. And what I've put in here, let me see if I can get around. Oh, there we go. Now you can see it. I've put in the penstemons, been there forever. I get some phlox. I get hardy geraniums that go up and down. And then I'm, my goal is to get a whole hedge of lavender. The Munstead lavender has done the best for me, I mean, in terms of height. And then I also did the Sweet Romance, which is Proven Winners lavender. It's done outstanding as well. It's a little bit shorter and it's nice for some of the shorter areas, but I think I'm gonna go permanently with the Munstead just because it has the height that I'm wanting. And then this section used to be a lot of hosta, Rosa Sharon, uh, daylilies, what else is in there, grasses. And so what I decided to do with this site, because this is all sun, full sun, after you know the, the morning starts, and what I did is I planted watermelon, pumpkin, squash, a couple other varieties of watermelon, cantaloupe, and um, I'm making this a vine hill. So I'm pretty excited. Let's see. I don't know what happened since it got so cold last night, but I had quite a few that were coming up last night, and we just planted them. Let's see if you can see them. Yep, we have a couple of watermelon coming up, so it should do well. We have the squash that's coming up, but I think what's nice is that this isn't a sidewalk we use a ton, so even if it goes over, the vines go over one way, I can also string up a cattle fence that I can do some vertical hanging of the of the pumpkin and the vines. I think that might be nice. So that's kind of where we are with Vine Hill. And then finally, 
is something that I still need to do yet, <laughs> is that I need to get my fountain cleaned out. And I will, but this is kind of my zen area. It's our sitting area out back in our outside kitchen. And what I have is all the propagated geraniums that I've put there, some super tunias that really make kind of a, a nice little quiet piece. So that's it. We're back around to the other side, looking at some of the strawberries I have growing and some of the vines that I mix with super tunias and then the English vine has worked very, very well. So that's it for the end of May garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. There's lots of things growing, lots of things still going on. I'll be doing separate videos to show how I continue to expand the landscape and clean it up and make it look like a garden you want to sit in. All right. Have a great day. Happy gardening to you. And thanks for watching the video. Bye.